So why doesn't the general public know about the importance of nutrients and the devastating effects that nutrient deficiencies can have on their health? One of the main reasons is the lack of nutrition education in medical schools. A lagging medical school curriculum with almost zero focus on nutrition remains the societal choke point for mass awareness around nutrients, mainly due to the fact that a majority of the population still looks to medical doctors for solutions to their health problems. This appeal to authority will no longer serve us in the development of our understanding of human health, and the evidence only gets clearer and clearer that, to this point, it has done nothing but send us in the wrong direction. This sentiment has begun to shift slightly over the past decade due to the faster spread of information over the internet and the ability to gain access to legitimate scientific literature databases. However, not every person who reads or spreads information is necessarily qualified to accurately disseminate its meaning, and therefore the spread of misinformation has also simultaneously become easier, leaving people more confused than ever about the right way to eat for health and leaving them vulnerable to predatory marketing and propaganda. Governing medical bodies have analyzed and surveyed medical school curriculums for decades. All surveys have come to similar conclusions about the inadequacy of nutrition education, with this specific 2010 study citing the fact that only 26 medical schools in the U.S. out of the 127 accredited U.S. med schools required a dedicated nutrition course during the entire curriculum. One of my good friends is a physician in, in San Antonio, and he said that he went to school for 12 years. 12 years! He had two literal hours on a Wednesday afternoon for nutrition. And that's it. In 2011, California introduced a bill that required physicians and surgeons to complete a mandatory continuing education course in the subject of nutrition and lifestyle behavior for the treatment of chronic diseases. Even though it was a seven hour credit course that was one time only, many medical establishments adamantly opposed it. Teresa Stark with the California Medical Association. We are in opposition today. We would like to thank the author and his staff and his proponents for talking with us extensively about this bill. Um, CMA consistently, we have policy uh, that we oppose any CME mandates on physicians. Representing the California Orthopedic Association, so this is just one more additional, and it's not minor, it's seven hours, that, that's a lot. Even if it's over one four-year period, seven hours is a lot for one subject. It's very, very difficult to keep up with it all. Uh, as Dr. Hatt has pointed out, he said, I, for one, don't believe government should be involved in micromanaging. The fact that so few medical schools actually require nutrition training is also concerning when coupled with the finding that a declining number of medical students are actually interested in learning anything about nutrition at all. A review in 2011 referenced the cause of this decline in interest as potentially being related to the fact that since the 1950s, medical students have all carried a similar sentiment that nutrition education in medical school is inadequate, similar to the studies that I cited previously. Another more recent study in 2017 in the Journal of Family Medicine found the exact same thing. Doctors across the board think that nutrition education is poorly integrated into the medical school curriculum. They witnessed little nutrition counseling during shadowing experiences and the nutrition information imparted was often outdated and incorrect. And medical students entering residency programs appear to be deficient in basic nutritional knowledge. So when you combine a lack of trust in the nutrition education inside med schools or even really a requirement for the medical students to actually take uh, any sort of nutrition schooling, or hours during their curriculum, uh, and then add on top of that the fact that their school is extremely expensive. And then since the 1950s, these doctors really haven't trusted that uh, nutrition education whatsoever. And even health organizations deem it inadequate. If you couple that with the fact that uh, the school costs a lot of money, it's extremely expensive, it makes perfect sense actually why it's not a, a normal part of our medical establishment right now. The dissatisfaction with medical school nutrition education is not reserved for institutions in the US, however, with another study in the Canadian Journal of Applied Physiology, Nutrition and Metabolism demonstrating an average score of 4.7 for Canadian medical student sentiments about the quality of their nutrition education on a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being immense dissatisfaction and 10 being satisfaction. Of the students surveyed, 87.3% of them believe that their curriculum should dedicate more time to nutrition education, referencing the fact that most of the medical students were uncomfortable discussing the role of nutrition in the treatment of disease and nutrient requirements across the life cycle. 